Good morning YouTube and on today's video we will be reviewing the Mini GP1. For those that have followed the channel, this is not my first GP experience. I did take out a standard one many years ago, but today we'll be taking on this heavily modified little hot hatch. Good afternoon YouTube and hopefully you can hear me today inside the Mini GP1. Like I say, this is a heavily modified GP1. Now, for those of you who have followed the channel or are eagle-eyed for my previous stuff, will know that one of the first cars I reviewed on the channel was a GP1. Now, it's very much a standard car and I got a lot of hate for that video initially because I made this comment. Now, after driving the car for about 10, 15 minutes, all of a sudden I cleared from that vision of the female ownership and I thought, this is fucking awesome. Like, I could not believe how good it was. It's so loud. This has also got the CAE shifter. If you can again hear me, okay. Oh. So we'll start with the interior. Other than the Royal Steering Wheels retrim and the CAE shifter, it's very much a standard car, still runs the standard GP seats. I'm trying to convince Matt to get a set of the GP Recaro CS seats because they look fantastic. Exactly what I've got in the E46 M3. So the next big thing, obviously, that everyone's, I'm sure, going to want to know is the engine. Now, I'll put a clip up of it on the rolling road. It's recently done 218 horsepower at the wheels. So you'd expect around 240 brake flywheel power. And I can tell you what, it absolutely screams. For such a tight, nimble little package, it's such a pleasure to drive. It feels so balanced. It feels so alive. And with, obviously, it being a GP1 and no rear seats and the full Scorpion system, you hear absolutely everything of that 7,000. 500 rpm So the engine runs, revised air filter, it's got the cat cams, it's got an uprated inch cooler, uprated radiator and uprated oil cooler. So it's not running crazy engine modification. Matt has looked at doing the big valve head, which he said should give it another 10 brake, which like I say, should then see you to the high 250s, maybe 260 horsepower, which for a little mini is ridiculous. And just like the first GP1, and like a lot of the hot hatches now of this size, they're just so nimble. Absolutely brilliant. Ah. Oh. Jesus. Oh. Awesome, awesome. And then someone pulls out on you. So a lot like the Clio, it's pretty much stripped out. It's obviously got a lot more comforts than mine, but it is still very much a usable car. You've still got heated seats. This has had the air conditioning removed, so it won't be as much fun in the summer. But other than that, you could still drive this car every day. The shifter was one of the big things for me that really let the standard car down. It felt very hollow, very dull to shift with. Whereas now, got a nice thick steering wheel in the Alcantara again from Royal Steering Wheels, combined with the CAE shifter, just absolute pleasure to drive with. So 
So tyre-wise, it's got the Yokohama 8008. I think it's RSs. It's a slightly different compound to the ones I've got on the Clio, which work, like I say, on the road really well. And like second gear. I'm getting too distracted to be reviewing this. I just want to go out and drive it. Awesome. So brakes wise, it's standard discs, standard calipers, but it's got the Ferodo DS 1.11 brake pads, which when they're cold, they're okay. They squeal like no tomorrow, but when you're actually got them up to temperature, the stopping power is absolutely ridiculous. Suspension is courtesy of Bill Stein. These are uprated dampers, fully adjustable. And again, probably a little bit firm for road use, but in this driving today, just it just completes the package. It makes it feel like the weekend car. Again, I'm sorry for getting distracted. I'm focusing so hard on actually enjoying it. I'm forgetting I'm supposed to be telling you guys about it. So we'll slow it back down a little bit now. Road conditions in Mexico can get a little bit busier now and then. So the biggest thing on the outside obviously is it's got the OZ racing wheels. Now I think he said they're like a super, like a Legera wheel, something like that. I can't remember the name. I'll try and put it in the description rather than me pronounce it incorrectly, which is another thing with his original GP that I always thought it was a lovely looking car, but the wheels just looked a little bit soft and that's really changed it now having those on there and obviously with the reduced ride height with the coilovers. So for me, it's finally looking the part. And the other thing is a little subtle difference, again, I'll have to get him to confirm the make, is it's got an uprated scoop on the front, which just gives it that sort of, a little bit more of an aggressive front end, because it always looks a little bit soft, but it's like an OEM plus modification to it. So I, I think it's fantastic. I'd love to have one in the collection, I really would. And it's another one of those cars that's cool because it's such a safe investment now, such exclusive numbers, and they just don't make stuff like this anymore. Man, if I had enough space, which I'm already pushed for at the moment, I'd have one of these. Finally, Matt's bought a car that I think, oh, I'm actually jealous he's got one. I really enjoy it. Like, oh, it's so good. And like I say, a lot like the Clio, you don't need to have big power to have fun. Like I say, everything now is getting so caught up on the four, the 500 horsepower, that any time you're in third gear, you're well past triple figures and it starts getting risky. So with this, it's a tight little package. It's got a limited slip diff as factory in the GP1. Probably not the most aggressive setup, but it's enough to utilize the front wheel drive power. Whereas in the Clio, if you've seen the video, you can end up fighting the steering wheel for power in sort of first and second. And it's really nice that you can use the power. Obviously we're on a dry day today. If it was wet, might be a different story, but very impressed with it. I really am. I think like, it's the perfect package as a weekend toy for size and for fun. Let's try and get it on a straight bit of road, which we might struggle with. So we're about 3,000 RPM in first gear. Oh. <laughs> Take my money.
But the seating position's really good as well, which is nice for this. I say it feels at a good height. I don't feel on top of it. The only thing that I still dislike on the minis is this clock. Like, it'd be nice with like a digital dash setup, but you start entering big realms. I don't mind the rev counter, but it's just a bit, yeah. So obviously guys, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. We're hoping to obviously get some more videos out and this is more just a bit of an intro to the car. And like I say, unfortunately, I'm just getting a bit too carried away driving it. My mind's running a bit blank as to what to talk about because it is such good fun. So hopefully we'll get some more time out in it over the summer. And like I say, it hasn't got air conditioning, so we won't be out on any hot drives, but it will certainly be doing a few runs. And hopefully she will be the car that will be taken to the Nürburgring when I'm on the bike. So Matt's going to be my pace car, carrying all my pants for the trip, which will be a touch. Thanks for watching, guys. Till next time.